Good evening, everybody. Um, we are here with our clinic talk here at Belch Chiropractic, and so today we have the honor of having Kalia Belch here with us, and so she'll get started on our curiosity with communication along with Dr. Belch here tonight, and so we'll get started shortly here, but we just want to tune in with everybody who is watching us on Facebook Live and on our YouTube account. If you know someone who is interested or would like for us to send over the link, they can certainly contact us. Um, they can send an email out to myself. My name is uh, Jen, so email to jen.her, that's J-E-N-N dot her, H-E-R, at bouchcarol.com. Or they can shoot out a uh, text message or an email to um, one of our clinic numbers, which is 715-574-5156. And so they can send out a communication with to myself or the clinic and we'll get started with our clinic talk today here. So again, let's give um, Kalia a welcome today here. So she'll get us started here. All right, thank you so much for joining us and for everyone online um, for joining as well. Um, so like Jen said, I'll be starting the first half and then Dr. Bouch will be um, finishing up the talk. And today um, our topic is curiosity. All right, so I'm gonna start off with two quotes um, to kind of set the tone. So this first one is by Eleanor Roosevelt um, and talking about really um, instilling curiosity in children and something that um, would stay with them lifelong if we could give an individual a gift. Um, and then Albert Einstein, so I have no special talent, I'm only passionately curious. And we'll continue to explore um, and highlight both, both these quotes as we continue. So, um, first off, we're going to get started with a little brain warm-up exercise. So, everyone's going to need um, a pen and paper. So, this exercise is kind of random, but it's a good way to get your brain warmed up. Um, this is a great exercise if you're taking a test and you go blank to kind of get your brain warmed up. So, what I'm going to have you do is write down um, 10 things. So, pick a topic and then write down 10 things. So, for example, if you choose red, writing down 10 things that are red. Um, if you choose animals, writing down 10 animals. Um, so you can pick whatever topic you want. I'm just going to give you a few seconds to pick that topic and write 10 things that are that theme. It could be fruits, flowers, whatever you want. Pause there. Uh, how'd that go for everyone? <laughs> Got the brain a little warmed up? Alright. So, for this next one, um, this is going to be a free write exercise. Um, so, I'm going to give you 60 seconds, and then I just want you to write down on your paper whatever comes to mind when you hear the word curiosity. Alright, so when you're ready, you can begin. seconds. Alright, 
right, we can pause there. Um, is anyone comfortable sharing maybe um, a word or two that you wrote down on your paper? Adventure. Adventure? Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, wonder. Wonder? Okay, great. Anyone else? Seeking. Seeking? Okay, good. I wrote a sentence, someone that thinks about things sometimes ordinary and sometimes not. Okay, I love that. So sometimes thinking about things that are ordinary and sometimes they are not. Um, so yeah, I think those do a nice job of touching on um, a lot of what is going to be coming up here. All right, so kind of the technical definition, uh, a strong desire to know or learn something, um, and then using, uh, we're going to use the VIA as a tool today in a reference. Um, I'm sure anyone that has um, heard Dr. Bouch's talks before is pretty familiar with the VIA, um, but for individuals that haven't, um, it looks at character strengths, so it rates 24 character strengths, um, and there is a free test online to see where um, what order your strengths are. So me personally, um, curiosity is actually my second strength. Um, so with the VIA, it's looking at individuals that are strong um, and gaining new experiences um, without getting in their own way or other people's way. All right, and then the two main components of individuals um, that have this strength are a desire to explore new ideas, activities, and experiences, as well as increase their own personal knowledge. So I think you definitely all hit it on the head. Um, all right, and then the V has done a lot of research and they have found that curiosity is actually a, a really um, powerful thing as, as far as a strength um, that increases satisfaction with overall life. And then they also found an association with increasing happiness, um, increasing positive social, social reactions. Um, and then also they find that it really helps to stimulate learning as well as starting new hobbies and passions, as well as really starting um, adventures in life. So. It's really kind of thinking of it as a tool and a catalyst. All right, so another um, paper and pencil exercise. So again, gonna give you um, 60 seconds. So reflecting on what are you most curious about? And then thinking about when you were a child, um, were you a curious child? seconds. Um, that anyone feels comfortable sharing as far as maybe some things that you're curious about or we're most curious about? Heaven. Heaven? Okay, that's a great one. Yeah, absolutely. I said, what makes people act the way they do? Okay, what makes people act the way they do? So those psychology questions, absolutely. All right, good. And then how many people in here were, remember being curious children? Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so some people don't remember. About half hour. All right. So this kind of feeds into the next question. So unfortunately, we see this shift um, from childhood into adulthood. Um, for some people, it doesn't. Um, but for a lot of people, we do see a shift. So the next reflection question, um, how has your curiosity been affected growing up? And then if it has changed, why do you think that was, that it did shift? Um, and maybe for some people, it, it increased. So I'll give you a few minutes to reflect.
Alright, so to check in, so a raise of hands, how many people feel that your curiosity was higher as a child than now? Okay, <laughs> so we got someone in the back. Um, how about reverse? Has anyone's curiosity, do you feel like, increased? Okay, good. Alright. Yeah, so this is absolutely something we can grow. Um, Alright, so especially with everything that's going on in COVID right now, we're hearing a lot about um, depression rates increasing and people becoming bored um, and disengaging in life. So that's where this curiosity is really important right now during these times. Um, so kind of thinking overall right now, we're going to do some scaling here. Um, so thinking about how stimulated or engaged you currently feel with life. So thinking about maybe the last week, the last couple of weeks, 10 being extremely engaged and excited about life right now, one not at all. So I'm just going to give you a moment to rate that for yourself. All right. And then kind of looking at the different areas right now of um, your life. So think about family, uh, relationships and socializing, work, school, hobbies. So some people uh, may be even kind of thinking um, hobbies maybe aren't even on this list at this point. So I just want to give you a moment to rate um, how stimulated you feel in each of these areas. So kind of when you think about interactions with your family, how stimulated and engaged do you feel uh, when you're socializing or interacting with people, how engaged and stimulated do you feel, um, work, school, and hobbies. So again, 10 being very stimulated and engaged and one not at all. that we can use curiosity to enhance these areas. So maybe with your family, um, you're at a three, or maybe with work, um, it's lower than you'd like it to be. So kind of coming back and reflecting on this um, at the end of the talk. All right, so now we're gonna switch into, um, again, kind of exploring this more. So looking at judging versus curious mode. So kind of looking at which hat do you have on. So when we look at the two areas of judging, um, approaching things with judging or else kind of that um, expert mode, feeling like you have to be the expert versus curious mode. So some things that we see in the side of judging is that a lot of times people that um, are judging often judge themselves even harder. So a lot of times we kind of see that self-esteem drops and that self-hatred develop. Whereas if we can um, shift into that curious mode, we can increase that self-love. Um, in relationships, if we can um, approach them more in curious mode, we're going to have people that feel like they're heard and more validated. Um, humans are extremely hungry to be heard and validated. Um, we know that individuals that approach relationships in more uh, judging um, and closed off, um, that can create a lot of damage in relationships and is known as stonewalling. And then looking at the more negative emotions that we have, the less that people see and hear, which causes conflict in relationships, and that's something Dr. Bouch is going to get more into. Um, the more curiosity we can bring to the table, the more um, that we're going to learn, um, the more that we're going to open, and the more opportunity that we're going to experience. Um, we know that with judging, um, negative emotions tend to spike. Um, whereas if we can bring in, kind of shift into that curiosity, we're going to be able to diffuse negative emotions. Um, and then a lot of times with kind of feeling like you have to be in that expert mode, that's where anxiety spikes and where you get into that more as well. Um, if you can stay curious, we're going to be more present. Um, and then again, kind of judging versus that curious mode, um, tunnel vision versus really fully experiencing um, what's in front of you. Um, so kind of reflecting on what would look different about your life if you did have more curiosity in it. All right. So um, looking at kind of ways to grow curiosity. So again, we're looking at this as a tool. Um, and this is really something that um, to help you get to happiness. So 
Um, these are just some things that you can try, and some of these work for individuals, and some of them don't, um, maybe aren't as interesting. Uh, so I work um, at a university with students, and these are activities I do with students um, that I see in counseling to help um, them work on curiosity. A lot of the students I see um, are dealing with depression and anxiety. So going for nature walks, um, getting curious while you're uh, walking, and a, a good way to do that also is taking interesting pictures. Um, and then a really great one is to simply pick a topic that interests you and then Google um, that topic. It could be anything um, such as human anatomy, um, monkeys, sports, and then finding um, three facts and then teaching it to someone is a great way to do it. Really practicing those active listening skills, um, asking questions, um, practice reflecting what people are saying, um, really having people um, feel like they're being heard and validated, um, learning about different cultures and societies, and then also looking at your day and looking at ways you can shake it up. So maybe you listen to a different radio station, um, maybe you try a new restaurant that you normally wouldn't try, and then a great way to enhance curiosity is to read a variety of things, um, and also to really kind of chase um, what you're naturally drawn to. So maybe you've always naturally been interested um, in baseball or space. So again, following that curiosity and re-stimulating it. So even thinking about what you were curious as a child, um, and again, um, engaging in that. And then expanding your circle of people. Um, so talking to new people, having mentors, and challenging yourself. All right. All right, and then using curiosity as a grounding tool. Um, so again, I uh, work with college students as a mental health counselor, and the number one thing that we see is anxiety. Um, so currently, this is the most common mental health um, illness in the United States. It affects over 40 million adults currently, and I'm sure we're gonna see those rates go up right now with COVID. Um, so with anxiety, when we think about anxiety, it's too much thinking in the future. Um, anxiety makes things feel really urgent and ambiguous. Um, and then we're also seeing depression rates go up right now. This is by far the second most common thing we see. Um, and it's the leading cause of dis or leading cause of disability in the US right now um, for ages 15 to 44. Um, so depression is too much in the past. Anxiety is too much in the future. So with depression, a lot of people start to feel hopeless. Um, and then life starts to feel more like a chore and robotic. So that's where curiosity comes in as a really powerful tool um, with addressing anxiety and depression. And so both positive and negative emotions have a ripple effect. And so that's going to affect if, if someone's depressed or if someone's anxious, that's going to affect their relationships. That's going to affect how your body feels. So a lot of times people that have high levels of anger or depression, um, that's going to affect your muscles, so maybe you're getting more headaches, um, you're maybe going to be sore, more tired. So again, this all has a ripple effect. Um, and so curiosity is really a tool to get some momentum going and to start to shift these things. Um, and so what's so cool about curiosity is it helps to get people grounded. So more in the present, it helps to diffuse emotions, and then it's also a protective factor that increases resilience in individuals so they can bounce back faster because um, we can predict and expect that there are going to be challenges showing up in life. Um, and so it's not about trying to avoid those, but being able to bounce back faster from those. Um, so I love this quote, curiosity is one of the great secrets of happiness. So again, we all want to be happy, but we need tools to get there to the happiness. All right. Um, and then kind of looking at curiosity and emotions. So kind of further, so there's a type of therapy um, called ACT, or acceptance and commitment therapy. And curiosity pairs really nice with this. So if you are feeling an emotion, um, which we all do, instead of avoiding the emotion, um, we know if you avoid emotions too much, what happens is they start to um, build, and then eventually the emotions come out sideways or really intensely all at once. So kind of a good um, metaphor for that is thinking about trying to hold a beach ball underwater. Eventually, that takes first of all, it takes a lot of energy, and eventually it's going to bounce back in our face. So we need tools to diffuse these emotions. Um, so really this idea of instead of avoiding the emotions, lean into the emotions, and that's going to help to diffuse the emotions. Um, 
And also reframing emotions as neutral. So looking at emotions as information instead of negative or positive. So um, a really good exercise um, to help, let's say you're noticing that you're being frustrated, maybe you're feeling flushed in the face, um, you can feel maybe your hands getting tight. So simply saying, I am noticing and doing a body scan. Um, so you can start with your head or your feet. Um, so kind of noticing, uh, maybe you have tension around your eyes or a headache. Uh, maybe noticing that your jaw is clenched, noticing that your shoulders are tense, and then reversing that. Um, so that's a really nice exercise. And a lot of people feel um, relief. Um, or at least some relief after doing the exercise and again helps to diffuse that emotion and then think about um, what is this information telling me so getting curious about why you're feeling that emotion and then um, again helping to diffuse that emotion all right so i am going to turn it over to dr bouch now See if I get my mic going in that. So thank you, thank you, Kelly. It's always fun to, to see your kids um, um, grow up and, and kind of follow in that same mental um, um, the, the, uh, getting people in the right place. So Kelly and I were at the fourth International Positive Psychology Conference, and that um, at that conference, um, um, this was one of the speakers, Todd Kajdan. Um, he wrote the book Curiosity, and for anybody that wants to see details in curiosity, it's a phenomenal book. He was a great speaker, phenomenal book. He's written also about upside down about emotions and saying we should not try to avoid negativity which is that in fact they have tremendous amounts of, of, of positiveness in that so curiosity really in a negative environment is saying I have an unknown and uncertain and in the conquest of that feeling I grow and feel better about myself because the world was never not meant to be easy and then avoid. I think as parents we have to be so careful. It's not removing obstacles from our kids. It's really making them curious about those obstacles and in the accomplishment. I mean, it's if you see a little kid and he puts blocks together, man, they feel great. Like, Mom, Dad, look at this. And when they put their head in the water for the first time, Mom, Dad, look at this. That's curiosity at its very best. I overcame something and I'm proud of it. And we lose that, and, and again, we've tried to, to, to negate that. I know, and through everything going on, change, fatigue, and resistance, we're exhausted. And so I want you not to think that we're going to try to do something that's going to try to change everything on you. I don't know if I get this on yet. I'm not getting it on, but if it changed everything on you. But we want to give you little things. We want to, like, lift you up again, make you feel better about what's going on in that. So I hear that, but one of the things that happens is, you know, there's a movie for some of you remember, Groundhog's Day. And right now it feels like Groundhog's Day. Every day is the same day, and everything stays the same, unless we learn a different lesson, unless something changes in it and that. I also want you to know that when you hear things today, you know, there may be something you hear, and don't resist what you disagree with. One size fits you, and we understand that 100%. And so if it doesn't fit you exactly, then use curiosity. Use, how do I overcome? That didn't make sense to me. How do I research it? How do I find more information about it? So it definitely fits you. One of the things you also, you have to make a decision. And I think maybe this is the hardest part. If willpower worked, man, we'd all be just sculptured machines. I mean, we would eat what's right. We would exercise. We'd say what was right. We'd have the perfect relationships. But... Willpower does not work, it's why power. And curiosity is the best thing to keep why power going. Because curiosity says, I, I, I want to be the best parent I possibly can be. I want to be the best pastor I can be. I want to be, why power is the reason that we change our behavior. Willpower does not work. I mean, we know that in this country, willpower, so you have to think about why power. So as I watch my daughter speak in that, my wife power is to have her be curious. I mean, love, love, love. She would be, but we used to call her monkey paws. And one of the hardest things as parents is she touched everything. I mean, she, she had to touch it. She had to experience it. The worst thing you could do is say to her, don't touch that, because it was going to be touched. So if you're going to be a parent, then be ready for chaos, because chaos is, is curiosity and motion. And if, you do, if you're not okay with chaos, then honestly, you should think about not being a parent. Because you have to be ready for, for chaos, which is curiosity and motion. The worst thing we do is, is beat the curiosity out. When, when we tell kids to grow up, honestly, they should be looking at us and say, you need to be a kid again. I mean, honestly, like, don't be so serious because it doesn't help anything. So why power is, what's the reason that you want to stay curious? What's the reason that you, you want to continue to go? 
I hope also at the end of that that there is no medicine like hope, no incentive so great, and no tone so powerful as expectation of something tomorrow. Curiosity is expectation of something tomorrow. That's thinking about something bigger than us, something different, but it's looking for something else in that. And we have to we have to be hope dealers more than ever. I, I just hear some you know, I'm in a grocery store and I hear a little kid looking at his dad, looking at something, and I'm not sure what the pre conversation was, but when he's pulling, pulling, pulling on dad, and dad's not very very he's not paying attention, he's not there in a the moment. But when a kid finally yells out, Dad, am I gonna die? And you, like, what conversation led a five-year-old to be pugging on his dad with such urgency? I saw also a, a, um, a little boy came in here and his mom helped tell the story. He said, you know, my best, best friend's five years old. He was out in the yard. I ran to the edge of my yard because I just wanted to say hi to him. He ran to the other end of the yard and he looked at me and he said, my mom has germs that love. Your germs kill and ran in the house. And I'm like, we have to be so careful. I, I just think we need to be so careful. Give people space. Don't be judging. But as we get more stressed, our curiosity drops and our judgment goes. So somebody will see somebody running down the road without a mask on and say, you're a baby killer. Like, do you really think that's what we should be saying right now? Do you really think there's a place for that? Agree or not agree with the mask. It's nothing we need to do. So judgment is the opposite of curiosity, and we start beating up people. I could not have a talk on, on curiosity without saying, put your phones down. I mean, absolutely put your phones down. I mean, I, I was teaching a class in Orlando not so long ago. We were at the pool. It's this gorgeous, gorgeous pool. This little kid runs up to his dad and says, Dad, 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 pay attention. Pay attention. So he runs to the water, and five times his dad went on his phone, and he ran back, and finally the kid just walked away. He wanted to show him he could put his head under the water. But dad had a phone in his hand. If you want to kill curiosity... For a moment, don't pay attention to your kids. Just don't take those moments and be curious because curiosity is being so taking care of yourself. I don't know if they have a caterpillar, a caterpillar or a worm or they drew something or I don't know, they have a burger on the other finger. I mean, honestly, whatever it is, we need to be there in that moment. So put your phones down. Make rules. Why power? No phones, phones at the dinner table. No phones when I had kid time. No phones. Things will work. They'll go. A few of you in a room and lots of you on the, on the pictures. We grew up when there weren't cell phones. Honestly, the world won't come to an end. If you go to a restaurant and you leave your phone in the car, you'll be okay. I mean, even if something bad happens, you'll be okay. Leaving our phones outside of it. I hear more and more families. They're just, when the kids come home, they check their phones at the door. And they don't pick them up until they leave. I just think that we really, really have to understand that. Because we have a major issue, as Clea said. Anxiety is the number one, 40 plus million people. Depression, we, we mean, we're 0.5%, a little less than 0.5% of the world's population. We take 70 to 80% of all the antidepressants in the world, anti-anxiety drugs. We take 75% of all the, co or the, the um, oxycodone. We take 80% of all the painkillers. Like, we have an issue, like an issue like we've never seen. I get concerned, and I'm not saying that the COVID is not important, but we had a mental issue, health issue before this. The World Health Organization, which we hear so much about, two number two, the killers of people, sedentary lifestyle and loneliness. And what have we done? We have created both of them. And, and again, that we aren't talking about it just drives me crazy. Your city, Wisconsin, Madison, last month, just put it out. We have, you know, we already led the world. We led the world in these categories. Sixty-six thousand kids in Wisconsin have had an increase in anxiety and depression since this has happened to them. I think it has to be part of every discussion we have, everything that we're doing, because we may lose somebody in the other end, and it's tragic. And if I'm 80 and I die of COVID, I don't want to, and it's horrible. But what if somebody at 20 commits suicide and they lose 60 years of life? I mean, we have to put a priority on, on looking at how do we keep ourselves in a really good place, and we'll try to do that. This is May 2020, 65% reported anxiety in, uh, symptoms in May. 65% of the population in May 2020, mild to turn down 34.7, mild 40.3, moderate to severe 11.7, and then severe. When we get to mild, it means it affects your day. I mean, you are avoiding things in life and that, and you aren't being the best person you can be to the people around you in that. We look at it and say, okay, friendships and relationships. We have eight, of the people that responded, 18% reported worsening relationships with their spouses and partners. What are we seeing? 
across the world, divorce rates are absolutely... I mean, we had some of the highest divorce rates in the world already, and we're seeing jumps like we've never seen before. In just a short time, I mean, and that 20% reported worse relationships with other adults they lived with, 17% with the children they, they live with. I sometimes think that... You know, we live in this Facebook world, and I know we're teaching on Facebook, but we see people posting, oh, best thing that ever happened, we're spending time together. It is not the best thing that ever happened. Talk to a police officer and, and the messes they're walking into, the child abuse, the child neglect, the, the sexual abuse, the beating. I mean, we are not doing better because of this and that, and we have to make a priority as far as what's going on. So one of the things that in this time and day is when we become stressed, we become more mentors than life coaches. So what is a mentor? I take my experiences and I tell somebody else how to live their life. Life coaching is I grow what's best in you. And to be curious about somebody is to grow what's best in them, not tell them what's going on. You need to, you need to eat better, you need to do this, you need to do that. Social media and tell me if anybody's life coaching or are they taking their own opinion and saying, because you don't think like me, there's something wrong with you. I mean, we have to be so careful. There's nothing good that happens with that. So life coaching, there's something I'll talk about later, seven to one. We, our whole life has to be seven positive experiences to one negative in that. We'll come back to that and we'll talk more to it. So again, please, 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 I'm gonna talk lots about kids. Be a life coach with your kids, not a mentor. Absolutely do not try to make them you, and I'll talk about that as we get, get on, but you need to be a life coach, help them be them. So one of the things with anxiety is that is anxiety for us as the person on the outside of life coach, for us having it, is if we think about quicksand, and all of our instincts have to be thrown down, down on quicksand. So when we step in quicksand, what do we want to do? We shift our weight to the other foot and we take our weight off it. When I put my weight on one foot, what happens in quicksand? I sink faster. I go faster as far as I go. Now I start to struggle and go. What does it do? Drive me into the ground farther. So when someone and anybody that's ever had a, a bad mood, a bad moment, anxiety, depression, and says, come on, just snap out of it. It can't be that bad. I mean, how does that feel? Like, none of us have liked anybody that's ever told us it's not that bad. Just snap out of it. So we try to through our judging eyes, tell them how they're feeling. Well, just don't think about it. I mean, so what? I mean, getting in a plane, the stupidest thing in the world. Do you not know that it's more dangerous to be in your car than a plane? Like, those numbers mean anything to you when you have anxiety. Like, we can fat people into not having anxiety. Like, we need to not do that. So what do we do with quicksand? First, you have to calm down. You have to accept the quicksand, and then you have to have it touch as much of your body as possible. You lean into it, you lay back, you get as much surface area on as possible, and then you trust a friend to reach out and grab you. Not to, 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 to do anything other than trust that they're there and they'll hold your hand. They're not there to get you out of the quicksand meeting. Don't struggle, don't struggle. They're to calm you down and let you get out of it. So in quicksand, in anxiety, we just have to be so careful. We have to understand, anxiety is not something somebody's trying to do themselves. Anxiety is a default part of the brain and we have no control over it. So just real quick, so we know it, and I know these are kind of, so just a quick on the brain. The brain has three chemicals that, that make us happy in that. Dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin. We have adrenaline that kind of gets us excited, and then we have a stress hormone called cortisol. And when we have cortisol, that's where we go to flight, fight, or freeze. That's where chaos, curiosity, emotion, chaos, becomes overwhelming, and we start screaming and yelling at kids. That's when we are not in a good place in that. But we also have to be careful on this side. Oxytocin, I'll show you the greatest picture ever. It's an MRI of a mom kissing a baby. It shows oxytocin. Oxytocin is the love. That's when we touch and hold and hug and we do things like that. The oxytocin is way cool. Serotonin is the great resetter. But when I don't have serotonin, I still want the thrill. Dopamine is the addictor. And when we have dopamine, dopamine is gambling, dopamine is spending, dopamine is pornography, dopamine is, is all the things that are not. Now, does dopamine have, a, have things it does really well? But we will shift to addictive behaviors if we are not getting serotonin. If you want your kids to not be susceptible to addictive behaviors, then make sure they're getting serotonin. Make sure they're getting the front part of their brain has moments of curiosity, and we'll go into that. So just a quick thing in that. I just want you to look at it a little bit, but understand that. 
So when you have a cortisol moment with a child, it's like a rhino running through their brain, and it makes a pathway so huge, it's unbelievable. Serotonin are little tiny things, and it's just like a mouse running through the woods. Woods, And it's just a little bit, a little bit, but man, cortisol is a monster. And so all of us, if I had to close your eyes, and I used to do this all the time, and I don't want you to go deep into it, but when I speak conferences around the country, I do a drill with people and say, okay, I want you to close your eyes, you're 10 years old, and I want you to remember when somebody was their worst when you were your worst and you needed to be your best. And sometimes 25% like they, they group with them for 60 seconds start crying. When we're our worst at the best, all of you could close your eyes and at five years old, at 10 years old, at 15 years old, at 20 year old, and maybe at 40 years old, you can remember when somebody was their worst at when you needed them to be their best and it affected you horribly as far as it goes. So we need to not, we, we need to stay curious. We need to understand the reason behind the behavior. So as I talked about, reward is dopamine and serotonin is contentment. Contentment is love. Chronic stress drives reward at the expense of contentment. So what are we seeing? Increases of, and 55% increase in alcohol use in, in, in Wisconsin. We have 60% increase in deaths from, from drug abuse and, or overdoses right now. We have an absolute off the chart increase in pornography. So when we stop having relationships, serotonin, contentment, Chronic stress drives dopamine, and dopamine is the addictor. It's gambling. It's all the things that can get us in trouble. So, again, we have to understand how that works. Now I'm going to go into it because if there's anything that we need to be driving home to people right now, it's relationships. So the longest study ever, 80 years Harvard, three teams of researchers, it might have been four, I can't remember, it was three to four teams of researchers, they took people of all nationalities, all income levels, all education levels, and they followed them for 80 years. And do you think what predicted life and what predicted happiness? What do you think it was? The quality of the relationships. When we look at a book called The Blue Zone, and we look at the people that live the longest in the, in the world and, and healthy, they have five close friends from childhood on. Five people that they can count on. Five people they're close to. What did we know before the coronavirus? One third of all kids had zero friends in school. One third. Nobody to talk to, nobody to relate to, nobody to be curious with, nobody to share things with, one third, and moms and new moms and, 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 and people with uh, children with kids. So building relationship is the most comprehensive, most exciting way to keep us healthy in that. So we found that good relationships keep us happier and healthier. Because good relationships are about being curious about somebody else and having those great conversations. Great friends, if you have them. They come up and you haven't seen them for a week, a month, or a year, and it's like you saw them yesterday. Those are the great relationships of curiosity and that. They protect our brain so we, we, we're not getting seen on dementias and that. And if we look at the middle age cholesterol levels that predict or how, how we grow old, it was satis or, or satisfied their relationships. So it was not cholesterol, it was not high blood pressure, it was not cardiovascular disease. What predicted the healthy life? was the relationships. And man, we need to have that part of every conversation right now. How do we make sure that we have good relationships in that? How do we make sure that, so, that, that when we see older people holding their hands, we need to be incredibly curious about it. Incredibly, like, how is it working? I mean, how is that? I, I think it, and it just, it just drives me crazy that we judge everything different. Everybody that does something different, we judge that, that and we need to not do that. Remember, we're human beings, not human doings. And the being is in the moment with people and our loved ones and our kids, and be in their moment. Look in their eyes, see them. There's something called mirror neurons. And kids are, are absolutely fired up to say, what does mom think? What does dad look? What do you see when little kids do something? They look for their mom and dad's approval. What was that five-year-old doing when he was running to the pool and coming back? He wanted the approval of his curiosity. He conquered something, and he was excited about conquering it. And if our kids conquer something, we need to go crazy. I mean, honestly, I mean, don't embarrass them, but run naked through the streets. I mean, we need to take every little win every time. I don't care if they tied their shoes or if they got their shoes on or if they wore two different color socks. Whatever they did, they are them. And it's okay. And curiosity is what keep them healthy for their whole lifetime. So we've gotten in the collective of things. I mean... We play sports and we invest in our kids, so we want an investment back. So we want, we yell at them from the sideline. Like, 
Why would a parent yell at the performance of a kid? Like, what are we doing? Like, how could that even be part of our brain? If we're curious, we may notice that they didn't play their best, and why did they play their best, and what can we do different before the game? But, man, do any of you, in the middle of when you're nervous, in the middle of when you're nervous, do you perform better when someone yells at you? Like, let's all get a math test out here. We'll just keep it simple. I'm going to scream at you while you're trying to do math. Like, do you get way better? I mean, does it like, whoa, whoa, like, oh, thank you so much. I, I, th that, that long division, it just, it got so much better when you start yelling at me. So then we start out relationships with curiosity. And we are just absolutely, we cannot talk enough. I mean, I know myself. I like to be on the phone about two to three minutes of that. At the longest, the longest, longest, longest. I remember having our conversation on the phone. Like, you wanted to know, like, how many times did you breathe today? I mean, did your heart go faster or slower? Like, what did you have for lunch? Like, I want to know everything. I mean, did you have a fork and a spoon? We were so curious, and we, like, and he is so funny. Oh, my God, he's so funny. And she's so organized. And, oh, my God, and we go on and on. Because we appreciate somebody's superpowers, and they're usually different than ours. And we think it's the greatest thing ever in that. And then pretty soon, we're not so excited about those superpowers anymore. We're not curious about it anymore. Christ, I go to a party, has to be the center of attraction. So what I thought was cool and I noticed them about, now I'm really, because he doesn't talk to me. I mean, we're at home and he talks to everybody at the party. If I could have two minutes of talking like that to me, I'd be so excited. Oh, she has to organize everything. I mean, everything. I leave my shoes for two seconds, she has to put them away. Our superpowers become super irritants if we don't stay curious about them, if we don't understand how they help us, how they make us grow together as far as it goes. So exact same thing with a loss of curiosity. So our superpowers, and we talked about it a little, a little bit earlier in that, we have 24 character strengths, and those are our superpowers in that. I laugh a little bit. Clea's number two is curiosity. My number two is, or my number three is curiosity. Zest is my number one, love of learning number two, and, and curiosity number three. I've never had to worry about what she talked about growing up. I mean, I most of my life people wish I would have grown up and had less curiosity. It's 24 character strengths. If you want to take it, you can get the slides. If you text the number that Jen gave you, she can send a contact. But you can take, there's a free one. There's one for $40 and one for $50. The other ones give you self-help guides with them. It's a great thing. So again, curiosity is knowing one who we are and who people are. We have to understand that all of life, we're either growing our relationships or we're attracting. There is no coasting. There is no in-between. We're either curious or not curious. We either stay in somebody's moment or we don't stay in somebody's moment than that. And with our kids, we need to be curious. Greatest picture ever. So this is a mom kissing a baby. This is the first ever um, MRI. And these parts light, lighting up are oxytocin. And when we hold and cuddle and touch and go, and depending on our love language, it fires us up. It, it absolutely gets our brain. And we know that the amount of those experiences that happen to a kid before the age of 12 has an 85% likelihood protects them from um, depression later in life. 85% that they have less anxiety. Like, we cannot overestimate this enough. And when that kid is in chaos and we get angry and we hold back a hug or we yell or worse, we, we are violent with them, it fires up the opposite part of the brain, which is cortisol. And a kid living in fear all the time learns the pathway of fear, learns to not be curious in life, learns to be afraid to explore, afraid to get out there, afraid to be wrong, afraid to make a mistake. What do we hear in young girls all the time? People are going to look at me, they're going to see me, we don't want to dress different, we don't want to be different. Everybody has the same dress, the same hair, the same, because we are afraid to be different. And how does that work in life? How is that working in life for us? Not very well. To be different is the absolute best thing in the world, to be okay with that. One of the things that, in a term, we have to understand, if you get anything out of here, try to be interesting, interested in people, not interesting. You know, if Amy, you know, some of you are still dating, some of you are going on dates. So if you're with somebody that is so insecure that all they do is talk about themselves, how does that good day go? It's a 10 minute, five day date. I mean, it's like takes forever. But when you have someone that's interested in you, that five hours was 10 minutes. Being interested, staying in someone else's moment. When they say something, stay in our moment. But what is our way to do right now? 
someone says, oh my gosh, I had a bad day. Oh, you think you had a bad day. You should hear about my day. Like, we don't stay in our moment, not for a second, not for a minute. Or if they have, say, somebody comes home and your kid says, oh my gosh, I just made the state soccer team. And instead of staying in our moment and saying, oh, you worked so hard, the most damaging thing we could possibly do is, oh, so how are we going to afford that now? I, so what you're gonna so now your room's gonna be even more messy because you aren't gonna be home even more I mean like we need to stay in their moment what we know with everything that goes on with couples we used to judge that think that the couples that that divorced with the couples that fought it's the couples that can't celebrate together that end up being divorced in that it's how good we can celebrate and stay in our other person's moment it's how long we can stay there it insulates every relationship if we want our kids to do well, be interested when they're one, two, three, four, five. Because at 12, they have a natural tendency to want to separate from you. That's how their brain works. It just, they, they, you're not going to be as right, but you, so we know we're going to lose the gap a little bit. It's where we start that's the issue. And if we start not in a good place, we're going to get in a really good place. Interested, interesting. Remember that. You'll wake up every day with the want to say, I'm going to be interested in somebody. I just want to hear. I, and, I mean, I don't care where I go, and again, I, it's more natural because curiosity is so high in me, but I can be on a plane talking to somebody, and man, they, I hear everything about them. I laughed. I was flying to San Francisco to do a talk, and I, I got to go to the bathroom, and I had I bumped up the first class. Well, one stewardess saw that I was a doctor, so she had questions. The next stewardess, there was a, a 747, massive plane. I'm in, By the time I got done, all the stewards had talked to me, the captain, the co-pilot, and, and whatever else, the navigator. Honestly, it's a three-hour, and like, I don't know, 15-minute flight, and I didn't get to the bathroom. I talked to everybody, and finally I had to say, like, I know you told me to sit down, but I've been heading to the bathroom for three hours in that. When you're interested in people, they will talk to you. When you're interested in your kids, they will talk to you. If you're a life coach, not a mentor, but kids will not talk to you when you tell them their answer right away. If you want your spouse, I mean, most of the time when we have a problem, let people talk and ask them enough questions because they know the answer already. But when you give them the answer, nothing shuts us off more. Interested, interesting. And then we have the clashing when we're not curious. We had happened and happened in life. So two relationships and then happening, what the moment is. So when I was... 15 years old, I made a mistake and I was embarrassed in front of people. So when I was uh, 15 years old, I wasn't heard by somebody. So now when it's happening, I make a mistake and that person tries to correct the mistake and this person feels hurt and this person feels like they're not heard to and so we pollute the happening. So we take history and history and we bring it into the happening and if we pollute it and we're not curious and I'm not like... I don't, I go, if I don't go into it and say, whatever happens, I'm, I'm just going to listen. But when I judge and pre-bring something into it, it makes this horrible thing going on it. So happen, I have something in my life that happened, you have something in your life that happened. It can be as simple as, so Jen and I, she had a horrible relationship, horrible thing happen with a uh, Chrysler car. And I love Chrysler cars. And so we go to look at a Chrysler car, and I don't know why she just, she's just, so negative about it. If I start to judge her negativity and say, oh yeah, she doesn't like a Chrysler car because I like it. I think, but there's some other reason. I have to be curious enough to find that out. Happened, happened, happening. And then we have to really remember, and especially for our kids, is experiencing self and remembering self. They took an elderly population and they asked them how good their life was. And then they filled, they have filled out all these questionnaires. And then they had a third party judge. There was no difference in their life. The amount of tragedy, the amount of death, the amount of illness, the amount of money. The difference was what they remembered out of their, their past. Teach your kids to remember what was best in the moment, not what was worst. When they come off a soccer field, they get done with a grade, they get done reading a book, they get done anything. Foster the remembrance of what was best. They do not need to know that they missed a goal. They do need, If you honestly, in a million years, don't think they remember they missed a goal, it's burned in their brain. They don't need to remember that. The remembering self and experiencing self, there's nothing in it. Experiencing self is the curiosity of the moment. And we need to train everybody to get back to that. Allowing kids to be comfortable with unknown, non-structured environments. One of the big movements in not the United States, the rest of the world, is they have areas where kids can play with no supervisors and no parents. 
and they let them play. We're seeing more and more sports activities where parents aren't allowed on the sideline. Not because of COVID, I mean, that's obviously a whole different thing. Kids need to be able to play without criticism, without something negative. They need to, I, 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 one of the things I've seen in the COVID, but I've seen over the last few years, I, hard, I see lots of kids in practice. I hardly see a kid with a tan anymore. They're not outside. They're not going. A mom came and said, oh, it was the coolest thing. And I know the kids. I mean, we treat them. They all have tans. They all. But five kids were fixing a bike, a, a, a chain on a bike. They were using their curiosity. They were spending time with it. So, again, <coughs> if we are not comfortable with the unknown, the unstructured, the un, we will never thrive in life. Life is about conquering what is hard for us, conquering what's not. It's about putting our head under the, the water and coming up with it. So Wayne Gretzky, the, one of the greatest hockey players ever, there was a, a thing called, it's the um, cap, no, it's not captain's cap, it's, it was a, a tape on it, but Wayne Gretzky made such a great comment that his dad made. He said, in sports, we're structured. Everything is structured. He said, so we got beat by a team in the national finals in hockey when he was 12 or 13 years old, twice. And his dad looked at him and said, those kids play structured hockey, and they'll never go on. And his team that was not structured, there was play time, extra time, creative time, curiosity time, let them free because the greatest players can make something happen when nobody else sees it. Five of the kids on his 13-year-old team played in the NHL. None of the teams on the national, on the national title played on it. We need to let kids have free time to explore, to color, to go outside the lines. You know, when a little kid colors and we tell them you need to stay inside the lines, like, there is no need. Like, wait, is it our need? I mean, are we the ones that they need to stay inside the line? They just need to color and have fun with it. It's, it's a great, if you ever get a chance to hear his, his point on that, but he talks over and over, Pele is on there talking. Why was he such a great soccer player? Because he had tons of playground soccer. He got to do things that he would not have got to do if coaches were around. Let kids be kids. Let them do creative things. Dealing with the challenges of life, not avoiding the challenges of life. That's the thing we pray and hope our kids will. And will they bump their knee? Our number one goal is to keep them alive, but it's not to stop. It's not to be a snowplow. It's not to clear the path for them. It's not to let them not have challenges. Have challenges, listen to them, help them, and be the life coach of them. Each day to face the challenge, to conquer their uncertainties, makes life enjoyable. We need to grow every day in everything we do. And it doesn't matter what the job, what the activity, what it is. We need to say, I have something I can conquer, something I can be better, some relationship. Somebody at work just drives me crazy. Our job is not to let them drive us crazy. Our job is to be curious enough and say, can I change it? Can I make something different happen? Can I, what can I do different? Because being driven crazy in life, man, that's a cop-off. That's the easy thing. That person made me feel this way. No, that's me not being curious about how can I do something different with it. We need to stay in moments of notice. And we, and I cannot tell you how important it is. I was teaching a class not so long ago, and I said, when your spouse, your kid, whatever, when they say something, I want you to ask 10 questions about it. I want you to stay in their moment as long as you possibly can. Do not change the moment. Do not think you have to teach somebody something. Stay in their moment. Wherever you are, stay in their moment. Notice it and talk about it. So what happens to us? So if, we're, if I'm sitting in, in Starbucks with, with somebody that I have a relationship with, and it's maybe my daughter, and she says, Man, Dad, I love that purse. Well, I think when she tells me she loves a purse, she wants me to buy the purse. So I ignore the conversation and say, tell me why you like that purse. Ah, oh, I just, I love how it fits in the shoulder. You know, you told me all about making sure that things didn't fit wrong. That looks like it's really ergonomic. So if I ask enough questions, it may be totally different than she wants me to buy the purse for her. I mean, that might be at the end of the conversation also. But I do not want to stop the conversation because I happen, I've had to buy her purse in the past, happen, she's curious about the purse. I'm going to shut her, her curiosity down because of my not wanting to talk about it. We need to stay and find moments of notice and stay in people's moments of notice. Man, people love it. I'm at the soccer field watching my younger daughter play soccer the other night, the person that rides a little cart around. I just talked to him. I asked him questions. I, we, I spent 30 minutes with him. I learned so much up about him. I mean, cool guy, like way, way, way cool guy. But I could have walked by and said, how are you? How are you? Fine, fine. We could have done the non-curious thing and then walked in and missed an opportunity to learn something way crazy. Curiosity is being excited 
for what's coming in. Mindfulness is being in that moment. But curiosity is waking up and saying, man, there's an adventure to have today. It's making games out of everything. I don't care what job you have. There's the ability to be curious and find out something about it. Make it better than, than ever. It keeps us focused and resetting. So if I want to grow my relationship with any with my kids, my dad, my mom, anybody, somebody at work, stay curious about it. It will guarantee that you can keep growing that relationship. If you do not stay curious, you just start walking by each other, it just becomes not fun whatsoever. You know, I you know, people ask me all the time, yeah, I've been in practice for a while now. Are you gonna keep practicing? Honestly, I love finding out about people all day long. It's the greatest thing ever. I mean I get to meet so many people, I get to hear these lives. If I ever want to be a cranberry grower, or I want to raise cattle, or I want to raise ginseng, I've learned all these cool things. I mean, like crazy, crazy cool things all the time. I mean, there's not a day that I don't learn something, or some word, or some phrase. I mean, like, it's way, way cool to do that. So people who are open and curious, orientated in their lives around an appreciation of novelty. And that's what they talk about with curious people. Novelty is looking and expecting something new, seeing the same thing different. So when Cleo talked about going for a walk in the woods, going for a walk is great and it resets us. But going for a walk and planning ahead of time, I'm going to see how many different trees I can notice. I'm going to see if I can notice something. Because we've all driven home the same way to work and all of a sudden we were in a car or something. Man, did they paint that, car, car, that house purple? It's been that way for three years. I mean, like, we drive by things all the time, don't notice them all the time. Or we'll be sitting with our, our kids or sitting with somebody that we know, and somebody asks them a bunch of questions, and we're like, I didn't know that. I, I, I didn't know that bacon and eggs with oatmeal and raisins and, and walnuts was your favorite breakfast. I mean, play the game of understanding what people, like, you know, and my kids know, and Clay would say, I mean, all the time we say, you could, I mean, what would be your favorite vacation? What would be your favorite breakfast? What would be your favorite? All the time in the van, we talked all the time about your favorite house. In the details, I want to get started, Clay would tell, I mean, man, this one like this, and I'd like mahogany, I'd like this, I'd like wood, I'd like, I have six kids. They are so different, it's unbelievable. If I tried to mentor any of them, it'd be a complete catastrophe. I need to life coach them all. Because again, they're so different than me. And it's, it's cool to see Clea with her capabilities and that. Clea and I laugh, we're, we're great travelers. Because what is, we have comedy and curiosity, but we can just go with the flow, that type of thing. But trying to have her be me, playing with her strengths. Hope that you have somebody you travel with that's an organizer in your note or somebody that's really good at making the reservations and not. I have a couple of good friends, John Webb and, 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 and Paul Sizer, and they're the organizers. You know, they bring me along for their entertainment value. I know that, you know. I, I'm just the guy that's going to be there. But they make it all happen, and at, at the end of the time, I give my credit card and make sure we got it all paid for it now. Moments of engagement, saying thank you. It lights up everything, kindness. But also understand when somebody says thank you or somebody says something nice or does something, you need to be just as kind in your response. Janice, I love your rings. Thank you. I feel good when I wear them. And so, ah, oh, they're nothing. I found them at a garage sale. I mean, we have to say, oh, but for everything. Like, we cannot accept compliments. And that, so if we want kindness and compliments, be good at accepting kindness and compliments. Humor, laugh at my bad jokes. I mean, laughter, hope, play with curiosity. Kindness up there twice is so important. And that, so now in curiosity, there's, a dip, there's five components of it in that. So curiosity is the joy of exploring, being consumed with wondering about the fascinating features of the world. This is a pleasurable place. So it's reawakening a little kid in you in that. We're gonna, for all of you, we're gonna run a little bit over to, to tonight, but it's going, I don't care if you go to a restaurant, it's being curious about your surroundings, finding something that's way, way cool, looking at a rainbow, but really looking and saying, how does a prism actually work? Like, how does that actually work? How does the colors come out? How do we have the different colors? Like, how could there be a double rainbow? Like, what is that? Be curious about the littlest things because some of us are getting older, we're realizing the little things are really the big things. Those are the things that are most important in that. Be absolutely, the first time you smell grass bored in the spring, like, whoa, that, like, that smells like cool, cool, cool in that. I grew up on a farm, so I don't like the big tank manure, but when I smell the old-fashioned manure, it like brings back memories. It's like, whoa, whoa, like, like I remember that. 
thrill-seeking, and some of us have curiosity on this side of things. I look at this, and I, I like heist bothers me a little bit, so like my stomach doesn't like this, so I'm not going to look a lot at it. But for somebody, that two people jump out of the plane, and one says, oh my gosh, greatest ride in the world, and the other person says, oh, worst ride in the world. Well, it's just how they looked at it. The ride's the same. It's how they look at the ride that's different than that. Social curiosity. This is something that I think is real curious when we talk about superpowers. If we're attracted to somebody with social curiosity, I guarantee you if you don't if you don't work on it, you're gonna it's gonna drive you crazy as time goes on. You're gonna be upset about their social curiosity because pretty soon their social curiosity moves on to somewhere else than you and them talking. We need to really work on this. Happiness is not a place. Happiness is a tool that gets us to that place. And happiness is your own individual journey. So for Janice, happiness may be putting together model airplanes. It may be walking the dog. It may be we have tools. And when we collect those tools, that's where the curiosity goes. Find something and move on with it as far as it goes. Also stress tolerance. And if there's anything we can work on our kids, this is actually one of the curious things is that we look at stress as being novel. We look at the experience and wonder and are interested in others, but are unlikely to step forward and explore if we do not have curiosity. Curiosity makes me say, first time I gave a speech, was I as scared as every? Absolutely. And was I horrible at it? Absolutely. But I wasn't afraid of being horrible at speaking because I was curious about how I could do. I, somebody today said, I know I'll be better after I do it. Not that they had to be better the first time. So curiosity allows us to have tolerance to stress. Curiosity, deprivation, sensitivity. So I recognize there's a gap between my knowledge and filling it. And I know it's going to be work to fill it. But my curiosity says, yes, I'm going to go down that line. I'm going to learn more about it. I laugh a little bit. I'm not greatly patient. But man, I was so proud of myself. My, my dryer wasn't working the other day. And there's a light beeping, beeping, beeping. So I got it. I Googled it. I was so proud. I found it. And it said, well... When somebody had leaned against it, when you lean against it for a long time, it locked the water, the dryer won't work anymore. So I held it for five seconds and it worked. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like it was like for me. Because I, like, I fix bodies. After that, I'm about as worthless as it can be. Like my next big skill set is putting gas in the car. It drops off pretty quickly. But I had something I wasn't good at. I overcame it and I felt joy with it. I felt really excited about it. Then I did find somebody that was excited that I was excited. Like, oh, I got the dryer fixed. He's like, well, you you should get the dryer fixing. So they had to be excited too. That makes it makes makes it all work. One of the things that we have to do in curiosity is it lets us be active, constructive in what we do. And so Terry has this really good thing happen. I have to be amazing at just tell me about it. Tell me what it felt. You know, I know it took a long time to get there, and I stay in his moment as long as possible. The only other is sometimes um, 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 passive, constructive, meaning, Terry, I want to hear all about what happened to church. I'm just going to be real honest. I'm way, way tired. I had kind of a tough day. If we could pick this up tomorrow, because I want to let you know, I think it's important. I'm just not ready at this moment for it and that. So this is okay. Can we talk about it tomorrow? And we may have to be honest with our kids, honest with our spouse, honest with our mom, dad. You know, dad may call up and want to talk on an hour and like, Dad, I got 14 kids. Like, I mean, that song, you know, you know, the cat in the cradle. Like, well, I got lots going on. So, Dad, I, I, I'm so glad you called. I promise. I'll give you a call tomorrow. I'm just right in the middle. I got two kids with diapers full on each arm. You know, I got one that spit, spit up on my hair. You know, I, I just need a moment. So, but never passive or never passive destructive or active destructive. Dad, you bother me all the time. You know I got five kids. I mean, you know I got six kids. You know, like, that's not what you do. You either use active, constructive, stay in our moment. You got to raise, man. I'm so happy. Now that raise will be more responsibilities, right? So what are, you gonna, what, what are we going to do with the kids? I mean, we do not drop to a different place. You stay in active, constructive in their moment. Or pass or active, um, um, uh, or passive, constructive, I need some time. I'm in a bad place. So... I, I think that, again, take the opportunities. Every time you catch them, be in such a good, good place that you take those, those opportunities in that. There's something we talked about, the racial in that, and I'm going to go here a second. So we know in life, if we want to have great relationships, it's a racial of positive interactions and negative interactions. If we're below three to one, 
that says that the chances of being divorced are almost 80%. Like, I cannot stress, I go with sports teams and I tell locker rooms win championships, seven to one positive to negative. When you start yelling at each other on the ice, you just lost the game. So again, we cannot do that. So parent-child relationships, you, there is some negative, I'm not saying there's not negative, I'm not saying negative is bad, but we cannot lead with negativity. What can we do to overcome and what can we do to come up with a game plan for it and that? With our kids at Dirt Tune, I cannot, I mean, I don't, in this last week, I had five, would be either a patient or somebody or a friend or whatever, but they had a direct relationship between the ages of 18 and 22, five young ladies committed suicide. I don't know how the crisis can be any bigger than we have right now. I don't know how we can have more kids on depression, more suicide, second leading killer by kids. We need to say, what is my curiosity? Be present. Be patient. To be present and patient, what does that mean we have to do? I think the hardest thing we don't realize is we have to take care of us. Because are you patient and are you present when you're not taking care of yourself? Those are skill sets of people taking care of themselves. Tell the truth. Surround them with healthy adults. Really think about what they're watching, what they're listening to. The bottle of forgiveness. If you see something wrong, how do you forgive instead of judge? Reach out and hug them. Give that oxytocin burst to them that. Have scheduled family time with no cell phones. Um, b uh, believe them and in them. Teach them how to be safe. Not afraid. There's a huge difference between teaching them to be afraid and teaching them to be safe. Teaching them to be afraid, ah, the world is scary and horrible. And, and we did it with our own kids a little bit. But they were driving and they said, they saw a teenager and they were terrified. Like, oh, because we had taught them big people were bad. Be, be careful about it. You know, man, if you're in a mall, somebody's going to run you into the, 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 the bathroom. They're going to shave your head, put you in purple clothes and run out with you. I mean, like, we terrified. We have to be careful. Saved and terrified. Not what we want to do. Active listening. You are being a life coach, not a mentor. Recognize positive choices. If you want to see somebody do something good, then tell them. If they come home at 10 o'clock, say, yep. You say, well, that's your, your curfew. You should come. Thanks for coming home at 10 o'clock. appreciate it. I don't care if it's something you expect. Tell them if they're doing something you want. Set and respect boundaries. Limit electronic time for everyone. If you want to know who's most hurt by electronic time, it's kids because adults are on it. You see that all the time. And open, open-ended open questions, not questions that tell them how to get your kids to read, read more, find out what they're passionate, and try to help them. And it's, I mean, you would think that would be natural, wouldn't it? Find out what a kid likes, and then find those books for them, instead of the other way around. You're going to love this book. You're going to love this book, because your father loved the book. Probably it. Happy, couple, happy Couples, The Magic in Their Marriage by Staying Curious, by Promoting the Positive. Again, we're either growing or we're contracting. There is no in-between as, as far as that goes. I'm just going to jump to that. So I'm just going to end with it, and, and I, I end often with this, because I think in our life, and especially with curiosity, you cannot practice it enough. You cannot take care of yourself enough. You cannot, you cannot be curious in others when you aren't in yourself. So why do we want people to be interested in us? Because we're not doing well. Like, we worry about everything in that. So this saying says, one evening an old Cherokee told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside of people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil, is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. Man, we have so much of that going on because ego is yelling at someone when they think different of us. Superiority is thinking my idea is way better than theirs. And that's a sign we're not taking care of ourselves because these are not healthy people traits. These are not where we're in a good place. So when we're practicing them, know that it's telling you you're not in a good place. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, faith. If I'm practicing those, I'm taking care of myself. Those are not not taking care of myself qualities. Those are taking care of myself qualities and that. If we are not taking care of ourselves, we will live here. If we are taking care of ourselves, we'll live here. And what are we seeing right now? Man, people are living there. Kids are having horrible home lives, horrible things. Teachers will tell you a certain part of the kids just dropped off the grid, never did homework, never checked in, never anything. We saw people drop off the grid. When you, what we look at, we, on top of the worst numbers in the world, 65% increase in depression and anxiety. Like, way, way crazier than that. So, 
Clea talked to you about some fun things to do, to, to curiosity. Curiosity is just looking at someone saying, I wonder in every sense of the world who they are and, and what makes them tick. I'm curious about them. Because if not, we judge. So I think the other day my self practice said, if I'm a little impatient, I'm, not, I'm a little bit out of sorts, and somebody's driving really, really slow and I can't see them. So I go around them and I'm ready to give the eye, and my kids will say, yeah, dad gives that the eye when he's not happy. And it's an 80 year old person. And you know, if they lost their driver's license, if they drew outside their skill set, it'd be devastating for them. To be able to go and, and, and go to play checkers or chess or somewhere, talk to somebody, and so because they're, they're driving at their skill set, which is different than my skill set, I'm angry at them. I want to give them the eye or maybe tell them they're number one. I mean, whatever it is in that. When someone has a different skill set than us and we're angry about it, we're not taking care of us because the first thing we should do is curious about it. Curious about who they are, what they are, and our kids and that. So I thank you tonight. So our next talk will be the third Thursday. We're going to talk to two things the World Health Authority has talked about is loneliness. So today, hopefully, we talked about being curious because if you practice it, if you stay in someone's moment, you'll make a difference, and you never know when that difference makes it. I've had patients come up to me 20 years later and said, you know, I was struggling when I came to see you. And you were the first one that listened to me, and I was stressed to want to be here. You never know when you make a smile to somebody behind a desk. You make a smile to somebody. You don't know the change you make. You don't know the 80 years of life you made to give somebody because they're still a year in that. So what we're going to talk about next time is we need to move and we need to have motion in that. We're starting to call it the Corona 25 because we're 25 more pounds of us to love around the world in that. So again, we're going to talk about the need for motion and what we do. So if you can have a gym ball available, if you can have some rubber tubing available, if you happen to have a mini trap available, those are three things we're going to show you how to have a home gym and how we, us and our kids, learn to have motion in that. Because again, I want to see everybody. My last, my last thing I will talk about. There are five major, major studies came out in the last three months they said, across the world that said who survives corona has normal vitamin D levels and who doesn't survive corona doesn't have normal vitamin D levels. So I cannot stress enough, D3, K2, those are the things. Germany has just pushed it like no tomorrow. All of Europe have bought into how are we more healthy and you know, they're opening up, not having the same kind of numbers we're having as far as it goes, but they've talked about taking care of themselves. So again, you know, and if you get out in the sun, but you're putting sunscreen on, you're not getting vitamin D. You need 25 to 30 minutes of unprotected sunlight, as much of your body as possible. I'm going to get t-shirts that say, you know, run naked, get your vitamin D, but whatever it is, but we just have to get as much vitamin D as we possibly can. It's the thing that we should be talking about. Other than that, we'll see you in, the, in, a, in a month. We'll see you the third Tuesday. Again, Gym ball, tubing, um, um, and uh, a mini tramp. And then Jen gave you the number of her, her um, um, cell phone or the cell, or the text number. If you text it, if you want to have this talk, or if you think this talk would be good, you want a Zoom meeting with some group and you think something like this would be great, and please spread it to other people on that. We all want to be curious enough to help other people. So thanks so much for tonight. Thank you. Thank you.